Well, artificial intelligence has reached a point where generated white faces appear more realistic than actual human faces. The Australian National University study found this is not the case for faces of people of colour. Joining me now live is the study's senior author, Dr Amy Dole from ANU. Thank you so much for your time this afternoon. This is quite incredible. So how is it that generated white faces are perceived as more realistic? I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Look, in this study, what we did is we took a bunch of pictures of human faces and a bunch of pictures that were AI generated, and we simply asked participants to tell us whether the faces were AI or human. And what we found is that for the AI ones, which were all white, around two out of three of them were perceived as being human. Now, the reason why we think this is happening for white faces, not for faces of other colours, is that when we're training these algorithms, we're putting all the same biases that already exist in the world into them. So in this case, about two thirds of the faces that the AI was trained on were white, which means it's doing a better job of producing more realistic white AI faces out the other end. Wow, uh, that's absolutely extraordinary. What sort of problems does this present? Because particularly in terms of racial biases online, I mean, surely that, that has to be an issue. Oh, absolutely. And look, when we sort of took this a step further, one of the things that we asked people to do was to tell us how confident they were that they were correct as well, because you kind of thought, well, you know, if people aren't too sure about this and they're aware of the risks of AI at the moment, maybe they're not likely to be fooled by it and maybe the biases won't have this ongoing impact. But in fact, what we found is that the people who are most often fooled by AI are also the most confident. So people aren't aware this is happening. Where we see this playing out as a major problem with racial biases is in areas as broad as self-driving cars, where we see that they're not as good at picking up a black person or even children on the road because they're not being trained in this space and sort of, you know, kind of playing out in that space. We also see potential um, uses in misinformation in terms of using white faces to be more influential in this space too. Yeah, it just opens up a real can of worms, uh, to be honest. So if humans can no longer detect AI faces, what's the solution here? It almost sounds scary. I think it's terrifying. Um, there have been people who've put out algorithms that are supposed to be able to tell the AI apart from human faces, but most of the time these are failing very quickly because the AI is then jumping ahead of them. We have a bit of an arms race between the two of them. I think what we really have to do is look to two sources. First of all, to ourselves, we need to get a healthy kind of scepticism on about the information that we're engaging with online and be using our common sense to check that information. So if you're being reached out to through a scam, make sure that you take those extra steps to verify identity in that space. The other thing we really need is regulation stepping in here. A lot of what's happening is happening so fast and with very little transparency. Even as a scientist, a lot of the time I don't have access to the information that AI is being trained on. And that means that we can't do the necessary and rigorous testing that we need to know about how this is influencing our world. And we want to catch this before this runaway train gets away from us too far. Absolutely. A very, very valid point. Have you got any tips for us? Of, of, is there any way you can really look at a face and really know if it's AI generated or not? What, what can people look out for to, to be able to make this decision? Look, at the moment, what our data is telling us is that AI faces are kind of taking on a more average appearance. So they look more like a white average face, which makes them more familiar to us. It makes them a little bit less memorable and they don't have distinctive features. For example, like King Charles, King Charles and his big ears kind of standing out there. But when I talk about this arms race between the AI algorithms and what we're trying to do to keep up with it, I'm just not sure how long we can rely on those cues. So again, really going back and making sure you're checking the information and seeking reliable sources of news and kind of other people that you're connecting with online as well. Some really good advice in what is a very rapidly expanding space. Dr Amy Dahl, lovely to speak with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.